No, please, don't throw my baby into the river. I'm telling the truth. I swear on my life, Tara cried out. As Abby raised her hands to throw the baby into the river, Tara closed her eyes and heard a loud splash. Will her baby survive this test? <coughs> Many years ago, in a Nigerian riverside village called Niba, there lived a wealthy fisherman named Boma and his lover, Tare. They were madly in love and couldn't wait to get married and start a family together. One day, Tare discovered she was pregnant. At first, she felt sad and worried about being pregnant before marriage. In their culture, it was seen as a shame and disgrace. But when she gathered the courage to tell Boma, he was overjoyed. Without hesitation, he got down on one knee and asked Tare to marry him. Tare gladly accepted, relieved that Boma still wanted to marry her, despite the unplanned pregnancy. They immediately started planning their grand wedding ceremony. Unlike Tare, Boma didn't originally hail from Niba, but from a nearby village called Basa. About seven years ago, he had expanded his fishing business to Niba, where the fertile land and bountiful river provided him with great success. It was here that he met the love of his life, the beautiful Tare. However, Boma still made regular visits to his family in his home village of Basa. Shortly after proposing to Tare, Boma embarked on one of his trips to see his siblings in Basa. That morning Tare felt particularly sad and wanted to go with him but Boma insisted she stay behind. He promised she would accompany him on his next trip for the proper introduction to his family. This time he had to go alone to take care of some family matters. Tari kissed him passionately and bid him farewell, already counting down the days until his return. Unfortunately, Boma never made it to Basa village as he set off with a few other travelers to make the trek to Basa. Little did they know, the path between the two villages had become treacherous of late due to the activities of a notorious gang of bandits. The group of travelers had made it halfway without incident when suddenly they were ambushed by the bandits who emerged from the bushes brandishing machetes and sticks. The bandits demanded that Boma and the others surrender their valuables at once. Being a wealthy fisherman, Boma carried a decent sum of money and valuables to gift his family. When he refused to hand them over, one of the bandits struck him over the head with a log of wood, knocking him unconscious. As Boma laid there defenseless, the rest of the travelers scattered in fear, abandoning him to the mercy of the vicious bandits. They stripped him of his money pouch, gold necklace and left him to die. It wasn't until the next morning that some good villagers came across Boma's lifeless body. He was identified as a Basa man and his remains were taken to Basa village for burial amidst the wails and cries of his heartbroken family. Three months after Boma's burial, a family meeting was held to discuss how his properties and possessions would be divided among his siblings since he was unmarried and had no children of his own. Disagreements arose immediately as each of Boma's five siblings laid claim to his most valuable possession, the large house he had built in the village. As they argued and shouted over who would inherit Boma's properties, his younger brother Ake noticed a heavily pregnant woman approaching their compound. Who is she? They all asked, wondering what business this stranger had come into their home uninvited. Once she arrived at the entrance, the woman fell to her knees, broke down and started crying uncontrollably. Who are you and what do you want? Asked Boma's eldest sister, Ibi, in a stern voice. After crying for a while, the woman introduced herself as Tare, Boma's fiancée. 
I'm pregnant with his child, she added, placing a hand on her swollen belly. A long, uncomfortable silence fell over the compound as Boma's siblings looked at each other in disbelief. Whose child? asked Boma's older brother, Pierre, finally breaking the silence. We were engaged to be married before he embarked on this journey that took his life, Tara explained through her tears. I have waited so long for his return. I only found out about his death this morning and had to rush here from Niba to see for myself if it was true. See here, woman, we don't have time for this nonsense you're saying. Abby snapped, anger rising in her voice. Boma is dead, and as far as we know, he didn't have a wife or any child on the way. Tari tried to explain her situation, to tell them about her and Boma's plans to marry, and how he had accepted the pregnancy joyfully, but no one would listen. They all called her a liar and a gold digger, accusing her of trying to reap where she didn't sow, to claim Boma's wealth and properties by lying about carrying his child. Yet, Tare stood her ground, insisting over and over again that she was carrying Boma's unborn child, but his siblings remained unconvinced. After going back and forth for hours, arguing endlessly, they reached a single decision. Tare must undergo the ultimate water test to prove the paternity of her unborn child. The Basa people believed they were descendants of a powerful water spirit. According to their ancient traditions, the water would never harm its own. It was a test of truth and belonging. This belief formed the basis for the ultimate test to prove if a child was truly born of Basa blood. The rules were simple but harsh. The newborn would be thrown into the river immediately after birth. If the child drowned, unable to float or swim, it meant the child did not belong to the Basa people and was not truly Boma's heir. However, if the child could float on the river surface, completely unbothered by the water's depths, it would prove without a doubt that the child was of Basa descent and the rightful heir to Boma's properties. I only want my child to know its roots and have a sense of belonging to their family, even if they never get to meet their father, Tear pleaded with them. But Boma's relatives remained unmoved. Then turn back now and be free or stay and carry out the test, Ebby declared, her voice as cold as the river waters. However, if your child fails and drowns, Rest assured that you will be drowned alongside as punishment for your lies. Despite the grave threat, Tyre decided to stay and submit to the water test, hoping against hope that her child would pass and be accepted as Boma's child. His siblings warned her she would regret not fleeing when she had the chance. Tara's stay with Boma's family in the following weeks was unpleasant to say the least. She was met with angry stares, insults and disdain wherever she went. They were furious that an outsider was coming to claim Boma's properties and wealth by lying about carrying his child. If her baby drowns during the test, I will personally make sure we drown her too as punishment for her wicked lies, Abby told her other siblings her voice dripping with venom. Tare, on the other hand, kept praying fervently to the gods, begging for mercy, for her child to pass the water test and for the truth to be revealed. How could these people make such allegations against her? One raining morning, a loud cry was heard from the hut Tare was staying in. She was in labor. Boma's female siblings and some elderly women of the village rushed to assist her, not out of love or care, but purely out of necessity. They needed to ensure the child was born safely so they could carry out the water test as soon as possible. 
After what felt like an eternity of pushing and agonizing contractions, Tar finally delivered a healthy baby boy. Immediately after cutting the umbilical cord, the women roughly pulled the newborn from Tar's arms and dragged the exhausted new mother out of the hut, taking them straight to the river to perform the cruel test without delay under the rain. Tar was utterly drained, her body still recovering from the excruciating ordeal of childbirth but she kept crying and begging them not to throw her precious newborns into the river's depths. When they finally reached the riverbank, which stretched out like a vast ocean before them, the oldest woman in Boma's family, the spiteful Ebi, stepped forward, holding Tari's newborn son in her hands. No, please, don't throw my baby into the river. I'm telling the truth. I swear on my life, Tar cried out. But Ebi seemed unmoved by Tar's cries. As Ebi raised her hands to throw the baby into the river, Tare closed her eyes and heard a loud splash. Will her baby survive this test? <coughs> the next few moments felt like an eternity as everyone watched in tense silence. Even the rain stopped. Then, just when it seemed all hope was lost, a tiny cry pierced the air, the unmistakable sound of a baby. Terry's eyes flew open and there in the middle of the river was her son. He was floating safely on the surface. The little boy was gently bobbing up and down, almost as if the river itself was cradling him protectively. An incredible wave of relief washed over Terry. The gods had answered her prayers. Her child truly was of Basa descent and the rightful heir to Boma's lineage. She had been telling the truth all along. Meanwhile, Boma's siblings looked on in utter shock and disbelief. Their cruel scheme to cast out Tara and her child had failed spectacularly. Abby's face was pale with rage and shame. As the baby continued floating serenely in the middle of the river, Tari quickly gathered her strength and waded into the waters. She scooped up her miraculous son and clutched him tightly to her chest, thanking the gods over and over for protecting him. Right there in the river, with her son safely in her arms, Tari named him Tamara Taina which meant God has answered my prayers in their language. Boma's siblings were absolutely crestfallen that their evil plan had not worked out as intended. Now that Boma had an undisputed heir, all of his properties and wealth would pass directly to little Tamara, and there would be nothing left for his greedy siblings to inherit. Why didn't that fool Boma find a wife from her own village? expat bitterly. Now, this outsider spawn will take everything. Word of Boma's siblings' wickedness towards the poor pregnant Tari soon spread throughout the village. When the news finally reached the king, he was furious beyond words. The water test they had forced upon Tari was an ancient, barbaric practice that had been abolished in Basa village years ago. Yet these arrogant fools had gone behind his back to revive the cruel tradition out of their own greed and hatred for an innocent woman. In a rage, the king summoned Boma's siblings to the royal palace and sentenced them to one year of hard labor, cleaning the market square, working in the fields and performing other harsh community services for the village. This harsh punishment was to teach them humility and remind them to be kind and welcoming to outsiders and strangers. Even after the king punished them with hard labor, they kept complaining and saying ugly things. To think her brat will inherit everything that should be ours. But they didn't know that their horrible words and actions were seen by powerful forces beyond this world. Boma's restless spirit looked down on them from the great beyond, burning with anger at how they traumatized his beloved Tari 
and tried to drown his only son just because of greed. Such an evil act against innocent lives could not go unpunished. One by one, Boma's spirit started hunting down and killing each of his siblings. First was Ake, the youngest brother who hated Teh most vocally. One night as he walked home alone from the fields, Ake felt a scary presence following him in the darkness. He turned to see a dark figure rapidly getting closer. Before Ake could scream, Boma's vengeful spirit pounced on him, viciously attacking until he didn't move again. Next was Ebi, the eldest and meanest sibling. As she sat in front of her hut, enjoying the evening air, suddenly a thick smelly fog started filling the air around her. A shadowy figure formed in the haze, the unmistakable shape of her dead brother Boma, face twisted with rage. His voice boomed, You dare disrespect my family and try to drown my only child? Now you'll pay the ultimate price. What happened next horrified anyone who witnessed it. Each of Boma's wicked siblings met a grisly death at the hands of their vengeful brother's spirit. Some were mauled beyond recognition, while others seemed to just drop dead from sheer fright after facing Boma's terrifying supernatural form. By the time the vengeful spirit was satisfied, all five of Boma's traitorous siblings had been violently killed, finally paying for their unforgivable cruelty towards Terry and little Tamara. The horrified king and villagers decided no further punishment was needed. They accepted that Boma's spirit demanded this restitution. As for Terry, she was welcomed into the village with open arms by the king and villagers after her horrific ordeal. She was given all of Boma's property to raise her son. While Terry mourned the loss of life, she could not help feeling a sense of justice being served on those who wronged her so heinously. At last, she and Tamara could live peacefully without fearing Boma's vengeful relatives tormenting them further. Tari raised Tamara to be a good, fair young man, always warning him against the greed and cruelty that consumed his wicked uncles. She wanted to ensure the same fate never befell her beloved son or future descendants. Though the events were very traumatic, the violence finally allowed Boma's spirit to find peace, knowing his family's honor was restored and his heir would grow up knowing the noble truth of his heritage. Thanks for listening. I hope this story has reminded you that the truth will always come to light and that greed and hatred can never prevail over the power of love courage and faith.